In this video, I will show you how to animate UI elements with script in Roblox Studio. I will follow an object-oriented programming approach. As you may know, Lua isn't an object-oriented programming language. But using tables, we can work around that and follow an object-oriented programming approach with Lua. I will show you how. Before beginning, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to support the channel for more game development videos. Let's begin! In this video, I'll animate the leaderboard UI. If you haven't watched that video where I created a leaderboard UI, it would be a good idea to watch it before watching this video. The link is in the description. I am continuing from the leaderboard Roblox project. If you recall, under starter GUI, we had a leaderboard screen GUI with two children, one script and one mainframe. The mainframe is what we want to animate. It is the uppermost frame of the UI. To animate different UI elements, I will create a single script and I'll use the same script to animate each UI element. So I need a script. I go to replicated storage and I create a module script. Module scripts enable us to write code once and use it everywhere. And that's what I want here. I rename it to UI animation. Module scripts create a module table at the beginning and then return that table at the end. We can change its name for convenience. I'll call it UI animation and at the end, of course, we'll return the same table. Here, I'll create a local variable, UI elements list. It will be a table. Tables in Lua can hold multiple elements such as numbers, strings, functions, other tables and so on. I'll use this variable to keep track of different UI elements in my game. I'll create another table named UI element. This is a way of writing object-oriented programming in Lua. So I will use different variables inside the UI element and if I create a variable that has a meta table of UI element, this variable will have the same elements as the UI element table. Let me show you how it's done. Here I'll create UI elements.new which will be a function. Inside I'll type self so it will take its own instance as an argument and object as a second argument. Inside the function I'll check if object is valid. If not, I'll create a new table for the object. And here, I'll set self as the meta table for the object table. So this one will be the meta table of the new object. And I'll add self dot underscore underscore index, which is a keyword that means if we are trying to find a variable in a table, and if it is not there, Lua will check the meta table, which will be the self. And finally, I'll return that object. So if it is not very clear for you, just copy and paste this part and it will work as a way of writing object-oriented programming in Lua. I'll add more functions. UI element.move to, this will be a function. It will get the self as the first argument. And also we'll get the direction, where to move. So I type is to inside. If it is true, it will move towards the inner parts of the display. If it is false, it will be moving towards the outside of the display or off display. I need another function to fill elements into the UI elements list. Here, I'll create a function named uianimation.addUI. So this is a function of this module script and we'll be able to use this function from outside. I'll add some parameters here. The first one will be the parent UI representing which UI frame we will animate. Let's call it underscore UI parent. It will be the uppermost frame in the UI corresponding to the main frame in my leaderboard UI. And I need to get a direction indicating which way it will be animated. Let's write underscore direction index for that. I'll use different integers to indicate different directions. And finally, I need to assign keyboard keys to trigger animations. So I'll type underscore key here. Inside the function, I'll create a local new UI and I want to use the UI elements tables methods. So I'll type UI element column new. It will create an object for me. So we are creating a new variable here using the UI element as the meta table. Using colon is the shorthand version of writing UI element dot new UI element. With colon, we don't need to supply the first argument, which is the object itself. I'll type table dot insert and I'll add this new UI to the UI elements list. So I type UI elements list new UI. This will add the new UI to the UI elements list. So we are populating the UI elements list. I want to create and initialize variables with the information coming from these parameters. So new UI dot UI parent will be underscore UI parent. So I am adding these new variables to the new UI table here. When we type the table's name dot variable's name, if the variable doesn't exist in the table, it is created as a new variable. And new UI dot direction index will be underscore direction index. 
and new UI that key will be underscore key. We could have given different names to these variables, but for consistency, I like to keep them similar. Let me recap what I have done so far to make the object-oriented programming style clearer. Think of UI element as a class with different functions, variables, and so on. Our UI elements list table will be populated with different instances of UI element that come from different scripts under different UI elements. These will come with the information of underscore UI parent, underscore direction index, and underscore key. And each time a script calls the add UI function, a new element with this information will be added to the UI elements list table. The reason I'm following an object-oriented approach here is that our module script will treat each of these UI elements in the UI elements list as an instance of the UI element, like a class. So we can rely on the instances implementation of common functions such as move to. I find it more organized like this. Similar to when you have a class with move method and you have several cars in a game and when you call the move method on all instances, they all move. Otherwise, without an object-oriented programming approach, we would have to move all the cars separately. Okay, let's go back to implementing. I also want to create and initialize some variables. New UI that is in is equal to true. Initially, we are assuming that the UI is on screen. I also want a variable to store the UI element's initial position. New UI dot initial position is equal to underscore UI parent dot position. I also want a variable to hold the initial size of the UI element. New UI dot initial size is equal to underscore UI parent dot absolute size. We'll use these to calculate the target position of the UI animation accordingly. So this is how we'll add elements to the UI elements list table. Now let's set the directions. Here I have this incomplete move to function. Inside of it, I create a variable local destination. If is to inside, destination will be the initial position. We'll assume that the UI element is on screen and at the correct position. So I type set that initial position. As we should set the destination based on the direction index. So let's create a table for the direction index. At the top of my script, I'll create a local directions table. Inside, I'll create some functions to return the correct position. Function, position, size, it will return a udim2.new. I am creating a new one. udim2 is a coordinate type used in building user interfaces. It is a combination of two udim, representing x and y axis. Here, we'll be specifying the position of the anchor point of the UI element. For the first index, index number 1, we'll be moving the UI element to the right side horizontally until it is out of view. So the X scale will be 1, indicating the whole width of the display, since we have a screen GUI as the parent of the uppermost UI frame. We are not using offset, so the second value will be 0. For the Y values, we'll do position.y.scale and position.y.offset because we don't want to move it vertically. I don't use offset values, I only use scale values to cater for different resolutions of different devices. So I'm assuming in this code that no offsets are used in UI elements and all offsets are zeroed out. No offsets people. So this completes the first element in our directions table. Let's copy and paste it here. In the second one, we'll move the UI element to the bottom of the screen vertically until it is out of view. So X scale will remain the same and Y scale will be 1. So I'll use position.x.scale and position.x.offset for the first two values and use 1 and 0 for the rest. Another important thing to note is that I am also assuming that the anchor point is at 0, 0. So that when I type 1 for the scale indicating the whole width or height of the screen, it goes just outside the screen. Let's create the third and fourth ones. The third one will move to the left side horizontally. Since the anchor point is at 0, 0, upper left corner of the UI element, we need to first move it to the edge by setting the scale as 0, then move it back by its width. Here I'll type 0 for the scale so that it moves to the edge. For the second value, for it to be not visible on the screen, I need to use a negative value. So let's do negative size.x so that it is just outside the visible screen space. We are pushing it back by its width. We don't need any change in the Y values. The fourth one will move to the top vertically. So we don't need any change in the X values. For the Y values, we need to move it to the edge first by setting the scale to zero, then move it upwards by its height. So I type for the third return value zero and the fourth value will be negative size.y. 
One thing we should fix is that these values will be sitting right on the borders. To ensure that they are not bleeding into the screen space, let's increase them just a bit. Let's do 1.01 to make these move a bit further away. For this one, let's do negative 0.01 and for this one as well. So these are the UDIM2 values that we'll use for the destination. Here I'll use directions self.direction index, which we set here. And I'll pass in self.initial position and self.initial size. Now that we know what our destination will be, we can animate the UI element. For that, I'll use local twin service is equal to game get service twin service. And I'll create a local twin info variable here, which will be twin info.new 0.3 seconds. And I'll use enum.easingstyle.sign. There are different easing styles, you can pick the one that suits the best to your game. And I'll use enum.easingdirection.inout, so the easing style will be used in forward and reverse directions at the start and end of the motion. The next thing to do is to create a new tween. Local tween is equal to tween service column create. The first parameter is the object to animate. So here I'll pass in self.ui parent because we will animate the UI parent, which should be the uppermost UI frame. Then I'll use tween info that I have just created. And here it asks which property to animate. So I'll pass in the position variable of the UI parent and it will be equal to the destination we have just set. My next job is to play that tween. So I type tween column play. After playing that, I should revert the isIn variable. So I type self.isIn is equal to is to inside. So whatever was passed in for the is to inside argument will be set to self.isIn. This completes the animation functionality of the UI element. How will we call that function? We will use the user input service for that. So here I create a variable user input service equals to game column get service user input service. And I'll use this variable here, user input service dot input began column connect. And I'll write the functions name that I'll create in just a second on input began. So here I'll create a local function named on input began. And I'll create two parameters which will be filled in automatically input and game processed. These two are called automatically by the input began event. And if game processed, which means that it is an internal input and it is handled internally, so we don't need to do anything here, just add a return statement. If not, we'll check the user input type. So if type equals to enum.userInputType.keyboard, then we know it is a keyboard input, so we can check if that key corresponds to the key variable of an element inside our UI elements list. Here I'll create a for loop for iv in i pairs of UI elements list and for every UI elements list element I'll check if input.keycode is equal to v.key. If so, I'll do v column move. In which direction? We don't know yet. If the UI element is off screen, we'll move it inwards. If it is on screen, we'll move it outwards. So I'll call a function named toggle move, which I haven't created yet, but we'll do in a second. So I scroll up here and create it. UI element dot toggle move. This is a function and I will use self as the first parameter. We'll call self column move to with not self dot is in. So if we toggle movement, we'll call the move to function with the opposite value of self dot is in. The only thing I need to do now is to add the UI element to this UI elements list. I already have a leaderboard UI element here with a script. I open up that script. Here I'll create local UI animation is equal to require. So we are looking for this module script, which is located inside game.replicatedStorage.UI animation. So we can use the functions of this module script. UI animation dot add UI. I should put in the main frame because it is the uppermost UI frame of the leaderboard. So I want to move that. The next parameter is the underscore direction index. Let's use one. And let's assign a key for that, enum.keycode.tab, because leaderboard is usually moved with the tab key in games. So let's see if it works without any errors, fingers crossed. I press tab and it moves away, tab again it moves back. So it works very well. Let's check different direction index values. Let's try two. It moves down and back up. Let's check three. 
It moves to left and back. Finally, let's check four. It moves the leaderboard up almost all the way. You can see it resists to go up all the way though. The reason for that is a property called Ignore GUI Inset, which preserves a 36 pixel gap reserved for Roblox's top bar. If we set it to true, this gap will be ignored and our UI elements will be able to use that space. So let's set this to true and try again. It goes all the way to the top. So this is all great, but in some cases, we may not want the UI element visible at the beginning of the game, such as player inventory. For that, we'll add another variable to the add UI that indicates whether the UI element will be visible or not at the start of the game. So based on that variable, it can be placed accordingly. Here, after underscore UI parent, I'll add another variable named underscore is default in, representing if the UI element will be in the screen or out of the screen. Similarly, I'll create another variable here, new UI dot is default in will be underscore is default in. And here I'll create an if statement, if not underscore is default in, which means it is not on screen by default, we'll change its UI parent position and set it to directions as we did here. So I just copy and paste, but instead of self, I'll use new UI for all values. One last thing, we had set new UI that is into true because we assumed that the UI element was on screen, but if we'll put it off screen, we should set it to false, like that. I should pass in this information as well. So I go to my leaderboard script and type true indicating it is on screen at the beginning. When I play, it is the same as before. If I type false instead, when I play, it is not visible, but when I press tab, it moves in. Let's update the underscore direction index as one since the leaderboard is on the right side of the screen and let's revert this back to true so that the leaderboard is visible on screen at the start of the game. So it is functional and we can toggle the animation with the tab key. You can have multiple animated UI elements and use the same approach to animate them in different directions with different keys. So this is how you can animate UI elements with script in Roblox Studio. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe to support the channel for more videos. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.